Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the lymphatic system. Now, what is this system? It's kind of like an extension of your circulatory system, your blood vessels and capillaries. It has some unique properties. Number one, it carries oxygen to throughout the body into the cells. It carries nutrients, hormones. It removes waste. It also has an immune component part to attack you know, viruses. That's why you wouldn't have your lymph nodes in your neck or your armpits or your groin. Those lymph nodes are there to detect and test out if there's a microbe coming in the body, it'll send signals to certain uh, glands to make white blood cells to start generating antibodies and killer T cells to actually defend you. So it's actually trying to protect you. Okay. So um, we have that, and then um, we have a fluid balance too. So some people have lymphedema, so like a lot of swelling in their body, um, and the lymph system controls that. Now if we look at the exchange between the arteries, the capillaries, which are small little arteries, and the lymph, they basically work together with a, with a little uh, space. It's called the interstitial space, or the space basically is just the space between the lymphatic system, the cells, and the capillaries. And that space has um, plasma. Plasma is basically kind of a combination between water, liquid protein, hormones, and electrolytes. And the electrolytes allow for the traveling of this fluid back and forth. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a complex system, but this is the basics of it. So you have this exchange going back and forth. You have an, unique properties with the lymph that it can carry uh, pretty much large particles of fat through the body that cannot necessarily be carried through the blood at this point. They have to be broken down. Um, and then you have different um, uh, lymphatic uh, organs like the spleen. Well, the spleen doesn't really do a lot with the lymph. It does a lot with the blood cells. It's basically like a mini junkyard that recycles red blood cells. It does it by two million, it replaces two million red blood cells every single second. So it's a highly efficient machine. And uh, it also has some other functions with digestion, believe it or not. Um, then you have the thymus. The thymus, and by the way, the spleen's on the left side over here. And the thymus is on top of the heart right here. The thymus is kind of like a training camp for um, immune cells. So it trains them to fight off infection. And there's a lot of mysterious unknown um, they don't really know what it does, but it, they know that it does that. So if there's a virus that comes in the body, the lymphatic system will trigger it. It'll work with other uh, glands like the adrenals to start to generate an immune defense because the adrenals are connected to stress. And so um, and the interesting thing about viruses, viruses don't really have any power of itself. It's basically an inactive genetic code wrapped in a, a little sack, and it waits until your cells are weak, and then it gets into the body and it hijacks the machine of your own cells. It basically hijacks the copy machine. I know, it's kind of weird. So it basically will start making copies of the cell at a very fast rate, to the point where there's so many copies of that virus in that cell that the cell explodes, and then it travels on in other places to invade. So the really only defense to viruses is to keep your body really, really healthy. Okay? And if we talk about foods related to your lymphatic system, really you're dealing with just a healthy diet. There's not really a specific food that attacks just the lymphatic system. You just have to eat healthy. If, for example, <clears throat> you have a severe protein deficiency, um, like in starvation, because fluid follows protein, um, what happens, the protein in the blood goes down and then the fluid actually goes out of the blood into the interstitial space and you can actually start having swelling in the ankles, edema, and even in the gut. Okay, so you see like these kids, in, uh, these little kids in Africa that are starving and they have these huge bellies, that's low protein. So low protein diets can create a lot of problems with, with fluid balance in the body. So that's an interesting thing. One last point about the lymph is that it doesn't have a pump like the artery system has the heart. It, it uh, 
pushes fluid by motion. So if you're sitting all day, you're not getting a lot of exercise, you're not getting activity, the lymph kind of just stays, stays there and hangs out. It doesn't do much. So it's very important to stay active. And also breathing will help push it as well through the system. Okay? So those are some interesting points about the lymph. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.